Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy welcome to seminar on robotic autom automation. How RPA will be a game changer in the world of finance. To enlighten us on this uh, topic, we have invited a chartered accountant, a tax tech expert. C.A. Janardhan Hebar is with us. May I request a brand chairman to escort him on to us and also welcome him with the floral bouquet. Friends, sir, please welcome Janardhan Hebar. Thank you, chairman. So, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, C.A. Janardhan Hebar to this August gathering. Janathan is our fellow member. Currently, he is uh, working for Densu Ages Network, which is a leading multinational media and digital marketing company. Janathan is a vice president finance, who owned several finance positions in Densu. His team supports the finance transformation program of the organization on deployment of target systems, support function and master data management for integrated finance platforms. He has led and implemented more than 450 continuous implement projects and generated efficiency over 50,000 man hours within Dentsu in last few years. Janathan has uh, travelled wide and across the globe to handle technology and transformation projects across the globe. He has received well-recognized CFO Next 100 2018 award organized by 9.9 .9 Media in the presence of corporate leaders of India at New Delhi. Deserves a round of applause. Besides work, he is a vivid fan of sports. He is a regular player of badminton and also loves swim. He is also a trustee of Matrabhumi Seva Pratishtan, which is engaged in philanthropic activities in Uttarakhand State. With this brief intro, I present uh, C.A. Janardhan Hebar before you. Please join me to welcome him once again. Okay. Thank you very much for the warm welcome and then the kind uh, gesture. I think it's uh, really overwhelming and uh, I think it's always a um, great feeling to be associated with our colleagues, the professional colleagues, chartered accountants and I think it's a fantastic platform <coughs> for me to talk about one of the, I think the hottest topic which is being, we, we keep hearing today about the robotic process automation. I think it's equally I'm looking forward to learn from these sessions and then hope to keep the session a lot more interactive and engaging. Um, that way I think feel free to go ahead and ask uh, any, any specific questions that you have. I think probably I'll, I'll come forward and then talk so it may be a lot easier. Fine, I think. Am I audible? It's okay. Okay. Uh, before we talk about what is robotic automation and what's all happening in the industry, so I would like to give a <coughs> quick 
uh, insights on what's what's all happening in the technology industry, what's the evolution and revolution which we talk about, and then what it means from a finance function perspective, and then how the role of the CFOs are changed changing, I think that's a that's lot more relevant. And then we touch upon what is RPA and then what the robotics, simply we call it as a box, uh, which can do. I will give a lot of context and in the industry trends, what's happening because it's a, uh, I think it is the topic which we've been recently talked about and then the practicing chartered accounts are slowly getting into uh, the robotic process automation, so it's better to know like you know what's all happening in the industry and then what it means uh, for the channel accountants, both in terms of the practicing CAs as well as uh, the, the CAs in the industry. And then um, we, uh, I, I have few demos to show you how the robotics actually works, and then uh, we can talk about some of the real life examples and then. Uh, lightly touch upon RPA relevance uh, in audit. I think this is what I would like to cover in today's session, but feel free to ask any specific topics which you want me to touch upon. Let's take ourselves back into 25, 30 years ago. So I think internet was a considered something very trendy, very new, and then extremely innovative. Um, I, today, can we live without an internet? I think we can. We can live uh, 24 hours without a water, but I don't think we can live without an internet in today's uh, world. I, I still remember my article ship uh, time, like uh, 20 years ago. We used to maintain books of account, the set of physical books of accounts and uh, we, we had to do the, uh, you know, maintain your cash book and the general ledger and do all the postings and then draw a trial balance, you know, for, uh, you know, the A4 size paper uh, and then you reconcile and draw a suspense account uh, and try all the uh, reconciliation of massive books of accounts and how many of us in today's world do such kind of activities. I think those things have actually totally gone. I think those have become a great memory to remember and cherish uh, in, in today's world. I think, uh, and then there was only one computer in our office. Like, you know, everybody used to pay, put, uh, put a trial balance and then the balance sheet and p and l and then, uh, and then one expert who knows computer and then he does all the typing and all that and then there, there used to be few mismatches and all that, then we had to really look at the whole posting and all that. So I think those days have really gone. I and mean, today I think every article in, in, in the office have the system to operate. And then, and then every time you used to go to client places, and today how many of you actually, like those who are specially practicing, will go to a client places? I think there are clients you may not have met, but you have businesses with them. A lot of time, I, I hear uh, from my friends who are practicing, they say that you know, they, are, they, are net, they have not met their client, but they have been advising, and if you have an internet, if you have a laptop, if you have an intelligence of chartered accountants, I think they can do an advisory service, they can, you know, you, you uh, client send your, all their accounts through an email, and then we look at it, and then we review, finalize, and then send across, I think, that's been the practice. So look at all that change happened in last 15, 20 years. I think we hear about uh, uh, the industry revolution which took uh, hundreds of years. I think the technology revolution is happening at a much faster pace and then it's a very, very high speed. So it is very important for us to be stay relevant and then ensure that you know we upskill and reskill ourselves to really cope up to the future needs of any organizations or whether it comes to an audit or uh, corporates or any any part of the practice and then 10 15 years ago the lot of us around the, uh, the social networking um, 
primarily Facebook, YouTube, and all that. Like a lot of companies actually use the social networking uh, as a medium of their business growth as well. So I think that has become part and parcel of our life today. And, and uh, today, now, we are talking about the robotic automation, we keep hearing about the big data analysis, artificial intelligence, business intelligence and then the cloud platform so you can access your data from anywhere, anytime, by anyone with you know proper security enabled uh, through uh, controls. And then we hear about uh, machine learning. Those machines actually learn. Yes, they do learn and then they learn much faster than us. I think that's what is all happening in today's world. Artificial intelligence is all about like you know building a sort of a human intelligence in machines. So let's come back to the robotic process automation a little later. Uh, but what is the future? So future is all about having a digital workforce working alongside the human workforce. Some of the large organizations are already started with the robotic process automations and then they are going to scale as high as 50% of their workforce is going to be the digital workforce and then very soon it's not going to take a lot longer. So it's going to happen very 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 quickly. So we need to be ready definitely for all these changes. So how the, the finance function and then the roles of um, CFOs in the organizations are actually changing. If you look at the traditional model, 50% uh, of their time used to go for their operations, producing an accurate financial metrics like ensuring their monthly flows are done, billing, the vendor payments, uh, your month end accruals and journals. What I am talking, I am not talking about the time, I am talking about the focus. Focus was 50% on managing the finance accounting operations and then very limited focus on transformation and strategic business decision making. And then there was uh, some little focus on the performance management supporting the organizations and then risk and compliance was equally a high focus uh, traditionally. And then how, how we are actually transformed. Today, CFOs are asked to do more things, do less, uh, with a less amount of resources and in a much shorter uh, time span. And then the, the, the primary focus has to be on transformation and strategic decision making. So what it means? Transformation, how, how do you actually enable your finance organization through a technology? How do you actually lead the digital transformations in an organization? I think those are the big focus and then how, how you are actually supporting your merger and acquisition strategy and how do you actually, um, actually increase the value proportion for your stakeholders, your, your shareholders I think, and then how do you make your business more profitable? I think those are the things taking a much higher pace. Do you think that the operation doesn't exist? Yes, operation definitely there. I think the focus is to make the operation a lot more efficient. That's, that's the, the significant shift which is happening. And risk and compliance is definitely a continued, uh, continued focus because of uh, there is a consistent change in the compliances because it may trigger a huge element of risk for the organizations like uh, the regulatory compl compliances are really growing day by day like you know the rationalization happening over a period of time but you don't see at any point in time so that will continue to have a focus and then there is a large amount of focus on the operational performance management that means how do you actually make your business profitable it is not no more the just the responsibility of the CEOs of the organization so see CFO is equally responsible to ensure the, the profitability of the organizations. And then how do you how do you actually enable all this? Right? You know, the demand is how do you actually produce a much quicker, faster, intelligent business insights through your systems, integrated systems and technologies. And then I think 
the number of organizations moved away from traditional PowerPoint slides, look at their performance. They want to look at the segmentized revenues and then they, they can drill down, like, you know, which are the geographies, how they are performing, instantly, right now, sitting in the boardroom. So what it is, so some of the intelligence inside tools and technologies are helping them to really produce some of the powerful visualization capabilities. So those are the big focus shift which is happening. I think it's very important. So is the technology as more value? Is the technology is the enabler? Can the technology be the enabler for finance? I think those are the big questions. Will it create a new value to the business? And and is RPA is the right choice to actually enable finance as an organization as a uh, the key function? Uh, I think those are the big questions which we need to answer today. So so I would like to share some of the interesting uh, research which is done by the Association of Chartered Service uh, Certified Accountants. It's a global. Uh, Professional accounting body has uh, interviewed number of leading uh, um, the finance and then the enterprise executives across the world. They came up with a very interesting uh, research. What it means, like you know, what's the business case for actually um, the technology investment? So, 75, 70 of the finance folks have said that technology in a finance function is going to significantly improve their productivity. And more than 50% of the finance folks have said that it's going to bring a totally a new value to the business. So across the enterprise, if you look at the improving the productivity, brings a new value, and then enhancing the customer experience are taking a leading priorities. If you look at the other priorities, the cutting the cost is is not the first priority. So there is a lot of wrong perception that is RPA is all about reducing the cost. I think the, is the technology or the technology investments are all about all about the cost. I think answer is of absolutely no. We need to be stay relevant, you know, to to make your process efficient, faster and quicker turnaround time, much higher accuracy. These are the, the key big things which we need to look at it. So I think when we talk about the technology, the RPA plays a significant role. So let's look at what is RPA is all about. So anybody have any thoughts? I'm, I'm sure you keep hearing about what it is not the physical uh, physical robot sitting next to us and then working along. So what's what's RPA? I think let me put it in a very simple uh, term, which everybody can understand. RPA is it's a computer programmed software which actually automates the process and then executes the process. As simple as that, right? It is a taking a robot out of human, like in the sense all your repetitive rule based high volume activities can be a good case for automation and those are the things which you are actually automating so so there are a lot of uh, wrong perceptions or uh, myths about RPA so I, I would like to clarify a few things the reason being I think some of them are like RPA is going to automate all our processes. I think the answer is absolutely no. RPA can't automate all our uh, processes. And then there is, I think there is no technology in place today which actually replaces human human beings or the intelligence of human beings. I have not heard. It is not going to replace or automate all our processes. Certainly not. The, the, the high cases for RPA automations are anything which is well defined, very well structured, and then highly rule based. And then, if you have to really gain a benefit, then there has to be a, a good amount of volume to really do a good case for uh, RPA. And RPA is certainly not a, 
uh, magic bullet which can like you know go at a rapid speed and then automate all of us. So it takes its own time. And RPA is going to replace humans. It's not going to replace humans because there are some perceptions. So it's going to take all our jobs. It's see definitely there will be an adjustment in the industry like how the, when the industry revolution happened like you know there is a shift in the job uh, pattern of jobs and all that there will be there will be a loss of jobs and but that's exactly where we need to upskill and reskill and it's going to create more opportunities and more jobs but different jobs it cannot be the same thing and then we don't want like you know we had a whole uh, model of like you know the VPUs and the KPUs and all that so that's the area where like 60 70 percent of the process can be totally automated there is no intelligence if you have 100 invoices and then all that you coming from one uh, vendor and, and then all that you need to do is debit expenditure and credit vendors I don't think we need to sit and do it or any anybody for that matter so we have better intelligence and we can do much better job. So, yeah. But we have been seeing cases like uh, news readers are getting replaced by robots in some of the foreign countries. The car manufacturing process has replaced the human being with the robots. Even surgery is being performed by robots. So I think uh, the, the change of the substitution of humans with robots is happening, but I mean, as you said, may not be in all areas. Yeah, it is. It is definitely already started. But when there is an element of judgment, thinking, and decisions involved, I think that's that's where we going to play a big role. So robot can't really think. If you actually define and if you list out all your hundreds of exceptions and then make your process very much robust, sustainable, I think that's where any robot it can be the various boards which you talked about, I think those are the things can be done. So there is, and then that's where we are going into a journey of artificial intelligence. That is like building an intelligence into, into sort of these kind of technologies which is going into a much upper into the value stream of, uh, of uh, automations. So yes, those are the big, big things which are happening. And then uh, there are again some of the myths about RPA is that okay RPA is not applicable for my industry. I think the answer is absolutely no. It is applicable for everybody, every industry, be the auditors or be any of the financial sectors or any anything. As long as your process is repetitive, rule based and then you can structure it, then you will be able to actually apply and use and leverage this technology. Otherwise it is difficult. See, the first and foremost thing is that I, I, I have seen like you know, a lot of people in the industry, all their processes are in brain. If they are there, and then the process will function. It's fantastic. But the point is that that's not going to be a sustainable uh, model, right? So your first, your process has to be uh, standardized. If your process is not standardized, it is not a case for automation, right? If you have so many exceptions in your process, I think those are not the case for automations. Yeah, I think we touched upon all, uh, all this, so this is uh, clearly the case where the tasks are very repetitive, very routine, I think those are the cases for the automations. And then the next journey is towards the artificial intelligence and the machine learning. So like say for example you have 50 vendor invoices you keep receiving and in a certain pattern of invoices and then tomorrow if they they change the format of their 20% of invoices comes in a totally different pattern then you need to actually train you know some of this intelligent technology so that they can actually use uh, a statistical tool and technology to even learn those and then actually deliver the output. So what robotics can do in a very simple terminology, they, they can actually look into all our emails, they can store the files, they can move from one folder to another, simple simple activities. Uh, you know, fill in the forms. If you have set of data in a in a massive Excel spreadsheet and it needs to be filled into a form, they can do it. All that, and then they make the calculations, interact with multiple digital systems, 
right? They can process the data, they can actually manipulate the data, they can actually uh, make all the calculations, they can actually trigger a response, and they can interact with multiple uh, digital ecosystems, right? So I think those are all the activities which which the robots can actually do. So is it all just a hype or or are they making a real big impact? So let's look at some of the uh, the the stats around it. So uh, in in 2016, the, the the whole enterprise RPA spend was around 610 million worldwide, and by end of 2019, it's going to go up significantly to uh, 2.3 billion. So already we have seen like you know. Two and a half times the 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 the, the spend which are happening on the RPA RPAs right? across all the organizations across all the industries, and then the projection says that it's going to grow 35 to 40 percent CAGR compounded annual growth rate till end of 24. It's going to touch 11 billion. So it's going to be a massive massive focus on the robotic process automations, uh, like you talked about uh, healthcare industry, uh, the banking, financial service sectors, insurance, those are the industries are uh, significantly uh, actually investing in RPA. So totally 66% of the RPA spends are done by these four key industries. So there is a big focus on on RPAs to automate, like you know, a lot of times, like you know, when we when we speak, we, we think that we are talking to a human, but it may not necessarily be a human. So the robot may be interacting with us, like the call centers and then some of the insurance company calls and all that. So um, you know, those are the trends and patterns which we have seen. Uh, JP Morgan actually invest, uh, actually leveraging uh, uh, the artificial intelligence technology to advise all their uh, investors now on buying and selling up all the shares. So they have made a huge investment and then Insurance Sector Alliance uh, is one of the leading uh, insurance. Actually um, all the hirings, most of their hiring, the low end job hirings are managed by robots across all departments, the finance, HR, IT, all departments. So it's a big shift and then as you said that the healthcare sector. So all the patient records are now digitalized and then, uh, and then we see the, the robotic surgeries and then a lot of things which we hear. So this has been a lot of focus on what can be automated and then this is going to be grow bigger and bigger. The reason being the more you have a pressure on your economy and then more challenges and then the GDP is thrown down and all that. So it's going to even fuel more money into the sector because RPA is quickly deployable and then uh, going to get a huge return on investment for a large scale enterprise. So they want to really invest heavily on that. Uh, there are more stacks on, on RPA like total addressable market worldwide is close to 50 billion. So there is still a huge opportunity uh, for this, this industry to grow even beyond 2024. As I mentioned in my first few slides, going to have a digital workforce, like you know, working alongside the human workforce in coming days and it's going to be the reality very soon. And, and India is going to be the real powerhouse of the RPAs. So totally, more than 50% of the talent base in US and then uh, in India. So that, that's a lot of focus on, on that um, and then as on today, more than 5,000 enterprises are actually leveraging RPA. In a sense, they are actually in the early uh, early stage of their journey, but they are making this is being uh, a key part of their uh, strategic vision, and then they're making a huge investments. And right now, they are doing a proof of value exercise to make sure that how does it actually works, and then they will take it with a big bang approach, and then. The stats prove that the, the kind of growth which we are trying to see here, the, the stats prove 
through that. And then I saw today there are more than 50 uh, service providers on uh, platform service providers on RPA. So the, the three key big names are UiPath and Automation Anywhere and then Blue Prism. I think those are the uh, key, uh, uh, key RPA providers that are making huge investments. So this is based on the uh, recent research done by the Genoa, the leading uh, research and consulting and advisory firm, given all these tags. So I think this shows that RPA is not a hype, it is, it is making a huge impact and then it is going to be the case. I was reading an article recently in Times of India, so uh, there is a bot, the Russian bot may hire you and fire you for the next job. So they are actually uh, created a bot which can do all end-to-end -end recruitment process. So what it means, more than 300 companies are actually using this including Pepsi to hire all the blue color, uh, uh, blue collar jobs using a robotics. What, what actually this bot can do? They can select all the resumes, shortlist the people, call the candidates, and then interview the candidates. More than hundreds of interviews can be done at the same time. So look at the acceleration which is happening in, in the hiring space. And then we actually, in our organization, we look at 15 to 20 profiles to hire one one resource to look at, imagine the amount of effort which is going right from your scrutinizing, finalizing the candidates and then the interviews and then shortlisting and then terminating the profile. So all that intelligence are fed into the bot and then they are doing the job for us. This is another case like uh, this is a, a Bangalore startup uh, has actually created a chat bot which can actually book the cab, flights and all that, setting an uh, alarms. So there are a lot of things. So chat bots are like, they actually interact with, uh, you are designed to interact with the human beings based upon some of the predefined questions, like you know, set of questions we get, um, you know, specifically insurance or a credit card and various inquiries which will come Banking, those are the things that are programmed. Or like you, know, you, when you make a call to a call center, like you, know, you actually the bot is instructing you to go to, like you want to, which language to choose, and then what, you know, navigate to a certain level. And certain standard predefined questions, bots are answering. And if something intelligence are involved, then you are actually going and talking to the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the call center people. So. And there is a robotic themed restaurant in Bangalore. Anybody visited this? No, even I have not visited, so I heard and this is there, definitely there in my list. So there is a restaurant actually in Indra Nagar. I heard that is more famous for this robot than the food, but we have to still uh, see. Um, I think there are six uh, robots there. It's called the robot restaurant. You can Google it and then see and then maybe have a time to go there. Oh, same, huh? First oh. restaurant in, uh, in India. Okay, robot restaurant. Fantastic. I think you should share what your experience are because I have not been to but I heard. Basically, it will deliver the food from the kitchen to your table. So but that's free. The table number is uh, fed in it. So it comes to your table, gives the food. It tells you to take the bowl or the food and it tells once you press exit, I'll go back to my place. Yeah. That's all. Interesting. <laughs> but uh, children are uh, very excited. Very excited uh, for this particular. Yeah. These things are very basic. Yeah. Why yeah. application they see, especially in combination with other technologies. Yes, for example, blockchain. That's right. And we do third party evaluation and all that. Yeah. So in such places, I'm seeing it being deployed very widespread manner, in manner that we cannot imagine today. Yeah. It's a possibility. Yeah, yeah, very true. I think, very true. I think we, we have been hearing, right, so, uh, you know, the technology is 
part of the human life today, like you know, those days of imagination is gone. Now the robots are serving the food and then they welcome you. They uh, sing all your birthday songs and all that. So they are adopting more and more. I think, as you rightly mentioned, so some of these advanced technologies have gone really ahead of these things. So how does actually the the robots work? Say, assume that you have a uh, sales person. He has to look into all the inquiries as part of his day job and then <coughs> distill all, all those inquiries in an excel spreadsheet and feed that into a particular system and then use that information to analyze inquiries which one needs to be responded and all so this more than 50 percent of his time is going in managing the information so now the robots can actually do that 50% of the job and then all that we need to do, look into is once the data fed into the system we can do a lot of analysis and then so that way his service to the clients are much faster and be able to really um, to do his job a lot more efficiently. This is one simple basic example of how, how actually the robots work. Any questions? What is the platform, the, the, the whole concept works? What is the platform? <coughs> like a .NET or a or something else or iOS? What is the platform? So we have those uh, leading RPA uh, platform providers like I mentioned, the UI path automation and all that. They build their expertise okay. and it can be any of those things. Like you know, it can be a simple recorder of your task that comes with a simple board. They can, you do all the activities and then they bought record it and then you execute it. So that's one of the, uh, you know, the, the technology or platform in which bots can work. So the technology should be in position to read my uh, ERP, right? Yeah. So the technology, whatever you are referring, the Prisma, uh, Blue Prisma, or uh, oh, yeah. IOTH, uh, those companies, uh, whatever the technology they built in, uh, either a device or a technology, so that should be able to read my ERP. Let us say I am working on yeah. a, a unique technology. Yes. I work on big books. So will it be in a position to read my uh, Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. It can. It can read any any sort of uh, ERP. So there are different types of bots I have explained. I think that you will be more clear of like you know how does it actually show and then I'll show yeah, you. Specific adapters, you know, for ERP. Yeah. Like somebody, for example, automation anywhere has an oracle adapter. Yeah. yeah. ERP requires specific adapters to be able to. Yeah. So, the applications are much easier. But for ERP, they need specific adapters. These industry leading uh, RPA providers, what I am talking about, they they have like you know all the key ERPs enabled. So that's why we don't have to be too much worried about that. So those things are taken care. Of. Who are these industry leading RPA platforms? Sorry. Sorry. Name the industry leading RPA. So UI path okay. uh, and automation anyway and then blue prism these are the top three uh, platform providers have a market share more than 90% of the RPAs but there are other uh, small players in the industry they can actually provide the services but if you are if you are actually going an enterprise wide RPA solution it makes a lot of sense to go with uh, these uh, top three key players because they have looked at various business uh, challenges uh, to actually manage the whole RPA process. Can you repeat the names of these? Uh, UI path, okay. uh, automation anyway, and blue prism. So these are like typical IT services company which were there in the past. Now they are they are the industry. robotic industry now. Yeah. So there is a so if our large company wants something automated, they go to them and they build it a platform for them which is integrated with it. Yeah, they can provide you a license. They can do a proof of concept for you. And then you can look at how does it actually work for your organization and in your processes. And then you can make a decision based on that. So are they Indian entities or the yeah? are these Indian entities or the they are like different multinational companies, like say UiPath when I mentioned, it's a Japanese company. They have 
strong presence in India. What about Densu? Is it among those? Densu. Yes, we have. You are also complete in this. Densu. Densu, I am part of Densu. Correct. Is it also into RTA? No, no, no. We are leading media and digital marketing company. Actually, we are using RPA for some of our processes. You handle clients to use this? No, for our own organization. Oh, for your own? Yeah. I thought you were providing services. No, no, no. For our own organization, we manage. So, in the given example, where we have said that the bot is reading the email, opening the Excel, and uh, cherry picking some of the information and then putting it back into the ERP. Now that has to follow certain schema, right? Then only it can do. If like you, know, you write an email which has an attachment which is totally different. Let's say in an organization, let's say you get RFQs and the example which you were giving that the sales team just to avoid having a person involving and opening and looking at it, you in, involve a digital uh, person yes, yeah. and he or it basically it opens it and reads it and take up the price information and quantity All information the reasons, yeah. now these has to follow a certain schema right now if because in, in the normal sense each customer will give RFQs in different formats absolutely so that's my whole uh, actually the very valid question and then the point which I mentioned your process has to be standardized you structure your enquiry form and then make your process standardized, then there is a higher, much higher case for the RP. In fact, there are a lot of open source tools available. Yeah. And you can design chatbots at very minimal cost. Yes. So you don't need to have a technical knowledge in fact. Yeah. You just log into Google, just say free chatbots, immediately you just You can do it, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So you program your own uh, chatbot. Yeah. You can do first forms in Bangalore are using chatbots. Uh, yeah. One example is in Mughal is Guru and Jana. Another phone is there. So two phones are already using that in a Fantastic. I think that's one of the actual use case. But if you are looking at an enterprise-wise case, it has to go through the rigor of the IT process because how are you actually managing your data security and all that. So because you can't just simply do things uh, in the way you would like to do it. It has to follow certain protocols to ensure that data securities and the governance are actually managed and those processes are followed. But I think in a, a small setups, um, you don't have to really worry too much about, because you are not worried too much about the data. In fact, I feel that the era of command and control process are happening. Because what happens, business conditions are yeah. changing every 24 hours. Yeah. And you need higher level artificial intelligence to adjust those changes. Yeah. So you cannot say the boss is okay, it will work for tomorrow. Yeah. So tomorrow will be totally different boss altogether. Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, that's where you need to really look at your robotic process strategy has to be very much aligned to your enterprise wise strategy. Be it your uh, ERP implementations across the platforms or, or number of technology and the, the business process strategy it has to very much align otherwise you may have to change the process very frequently. Any, any more questions? Uh, I've used automation anywhere. Yeah. I've used the software automation anywhere and has a pro and community version. Okay, so, I, so how do you think the and in the community version is actually pretty good. Okay, it's actually pretty good. So, and I think even these other providers do have a free version. So, I'm using the free cloud-based version. So, how do you think these free versions are free, uh, you know, visible in the trade version? How good is it? But let's say a small company. I, I don't want a major pro license. Uh, how good, let's say, for a small firm or a small company would let's say this free version actually help? I think uh, what happens is these are the big uh, players they first give you free version and then look at and automate and then they will change their pricing model. Like you know how Jio came up with a fantastic idea. They gave you the free mobile SIM card and then we all used it and now they are the, the market leaders, right? So that's, that's how they actually play. Actually the free version works for the period which they have given. There may be a difference in the features which they provide with the free version and then the pro license versions. 
But at some point of time, moment you onboard your process into an RPA, then then they may change their charging model at any point in time. So they may, you may have to end up paying it. So as long as they provide you pre-perpetual license, please go ahead and use it. Yeah. Yeah. Your data is not to be shared. If your data is shared, that's the only question. Yeah, true. I think uh, some of the examples actually we have implemented in our organizations across the market, like simple, simple examples, right from the invoice processing, cash application, the payment applications, travel invoice management, all, all that part of the processes which we have automated using robotics. Let me pick one uh, simple example which is, uh, say for example, bank statement download. So, um, um, in, in uh, market UK, we had uh, close to 22 bank accounts. One of uh, the accounts payable person's job was to download these 22 bank accounts every day and then use it for uh, you know uh, reconciliations and then review process and all that. So, this downloading 22 bank accounts was taking one and a half hours daily job and then we have fully automated it. So what it means that one and a half hours into 20 days which is equivalent to close to uh, 30 hours is totally saved and then by the time it comes to an office all those the bank statements are downloaded and ready. So I think he don't actually enjoy doing downloading the bank statement, right? So these are the cases and then he wants to do something new, different value add jobs, not downloading a bank statement. This is one simple example. So moment we built this bot, what we what we did is we looked at all other markets, what Netherlands is doing, what Singapore is doing, how do we actually, like they may have uh, the same size of bank accounts, which similar AP clerk may be doing it, right? So this is one classic example. There is no intelligence built into downloading a bank statement, it's just a job. The same goes with like you know, some of the reports. In, in a large organization, what happens is like you will have a monthly financial reporting and then once your books of accounts are closed, you run the monthly financial reporting and then you, you actually send it across to various, various CEOs and all that across your uh, segments and then different companies and all. 200, 300 legal entities. And it takes a massive amount of time and then once they send it, then the analysis and the discussion start. So those things are fully, totally automated. And what I'm trying to say is that there are very, if you take a closer lens to our process, there are many cases where uh, where we can automate and it gives a huge opportunity to structure our process. Because if you don't structure and if you don't document it, I don't think there is a good case for RPA automation. And, uh, and then another classic becomes we are actually using, we are rolling out uh, target systems across worldwide because our organization has grown through number of acquisitions. We have a fragmented system landscape, multiple systems, more than 100 local accounting systems across markets and all. It is unmanageably challenging. So we are rolling out a common global ERP system. So in that process, including your testing, managing the whole sort of processes which we are using um, some of these automation tools. What it's going to bring on the table is much faster turnaround uh, and we need to actually deliver numbers much quicker like work day 3, 4 you have to actually produce your financial statement. So if we can accelerate some of the processes that's going to actually help. And in time, we are able to close our audit on time and then be able to su submit, provide our audit and financial statements back to the stock exchanges and all that on time. So, uh, and then in the end, uh, you will also have a much better customer experience. Uh, just one query, just in, the, in that previous slide. Yeah. Uh, see, if I look at the third uh, column, there is a mention of this uh, uh, risk analysis matrix. Yeah. What we uh, do in uh, even for ICFR compliance, we do that. Yeah. So just want.
started to change, like this when we come to analytics or this where, where the human brain and the decision making is involved. How do you see that part as an automation? Because all throughout I am seeing execution level work. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. These are the areas where you know I am little confused at how do the systems are so intelligent enough to perform the risk analysis metrics where human decision making is involved. Uh, that, that's the question. So we are moving towards that. See, you know, for example, where there are human intelligence are involved. You will have more, do more exceptions okay. management. Say, for example, risk analysis metrics. Mm -hmm. All your customers, you will have a set pattern of approved credit limit. So, and then you so look okay. at the whole outstanding and all that. Okay. So, so it's a slightly different one. Right. But when you have more exceptions, then you have to build more rules around it right. to make it work. I will show you one or two videos like you know how we have actually automated processes uh, that will give you actually the real feel of like you know how does actually the bot process works. So one of the example is invoice processing. Right? So um, we have three uh, systems involved here. Um, Coupa is actually the the procurement and the purchase order management system, and then we have. Um, uh, ERP which is called a DDS, so where the, all the accounting happens and then we have a workflow for, workflow tool which is inbuilt um, which is like all the invoices once you have, you have complete massive set of data maintained in a workflow tool which actually look at like you know all your invoices and the volumes and different data which are stored in that workflow tool. So what happens is um, all the green like in this case all the processes are fully automated, right from logging into the purchase system and then extracting the complete vendor details and then uh, the, all the details required to update the whole workflow tool which is a task that is total one stop solution uh, for our uh, managing the complete vendor uh, data and then it saves the invoices, performs set number of QC that means if there are a uh, data missing then it probably rejects then you need to complete the data and then it gets updated and then the entire data updated in our workflow tool it generates the whole set of invoices that needs to be posted and it posts the whole batch file and then updates the work state comes back to the workflow tool and updates the workflow tool saying that if invoice is posted it says posted if invoice is paid it says paid so all that updates will happen. So the entire process is automated. It is done for the small process actually for one of the entities who have a volume of around 200 devices so saving approximately 150 hours. So I will show you now how actually this board works. And then, meanwhile, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer while they actually are in it. Let's try it for one last time. And this is another example, the payroll automation, the posting of all the payroll transactions, which is, it's not a very simple and easy payroll process which we have, like you, know, you have multiple cost centers and all that needs to be updated into a payroll journal and then that has to be posted so which is totally automated so can you try last one last time if you can in the meantime you ever come across a standard repetitive process but difficult to implement for some, some reason Sorry? Have you come across any scenario where it's a static repetitive process? Okay, we are going it on shift 1, shift 2, shift 3, but it is not uh, possible to be implemented for some reasons on the road inside. I have not come across any such scenarios where the processes are very repetitive and routine, rule based. We can always uh, implement. The, but the challenge which I faced actually is when we initially started our uh, robotic process journey. 
but we have if we had to implement uh, automations for multiple geographies like the processes run in uh, multiple geographies and we also all our uh, entire transaction processing to a third party bpo provider so then they are accessing our environment through a uh, citrix environment so those are the cases where we <laughs> yes we faced the initial technical glitches uh, to go through but otherwise as a use case to automate i think any thing which is repetitive rule based we can actually automate thank you okay. any other questions So this uh, RPM is sitting on top of the ERP and uh, uh, start to functioning only that dump data thrown out by the ERP or will it be interacting with the ERP? It can interact with the ERP but it's outside of your ERP system. Okay. Yeah. And I'll show you because the concern is that most of the ERP vendors uh, do not uh, allow uh, third party application to intervene. In the so they are not going to see like simple robotic process automation like if you are like an ap clerk what are you going to do you are going to log into your erp system you are going to process your invoices you are going to make the payment you are going to reconcile all that you do instead of you doing it machine will do for you the the software will do it so there are two types of automation which i am going to talk about um, you know one is an attended robot that means you can actually trigger the robot and then, then that starts functioning um, and then there can be unattended robot that means it works 24 by 7 like you know uh, for a mass volume of devices so you can schedule the time and then it triggers that time and then it just runs the process and then it's now coming so let's look at the video does that answer your question so mostly what are the applications? Is it only limited to uh, accounting or the kind of uh, functions or even into operations also? It, 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 can, it can be an accounting, it can be operations, it can be any 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 business processes. As long as it is well defined, very well structured, mm -hmm. you can actually leverage RPA. Like, like the process is predictable. Yeah. What, what a human would actually do that is that is predictable and to some extent and we can uh, all the simulation possibilities let's say yes. uh, anything uh, you know additional or anything uh, extra is also taken care of in the uh, schema absolutely yeah so then yeah. it will work yeah absolutely so it's highly predictable the complexity of the decision making is less data is very structured then the, the, there is a large effect for your automation. So where you have a significant decision making involved and then the data is totally unstructured, then is a pretty much uh, less case for automation and because there is where your human intelligence is required to actually manage the process. <coughs> is it? Oh, no. No, this, okay. Have you copied this for yourself? In this instance, we will demonstrate how robotic process automation can be used to consolidate multiple manually performed tasks across a number of systems and tools to deliver an error-free process. The procured pay team in BCOE had to follow a series of manual steps for invoice processing. This process was prone to errors as there were many types of vendors and the invoice format was not consistent. There were multiple handoffs as information needed to be manually extracted and updated across three different systems and tools. The PO system Cooper, the workflow tool TOS and the payment system DDS. It also took six and a half minutes to process each invoice through the manual steps. The steps in this process are log into Cooper and extract vendor details, 
and check further details from invoice needed to update in tracker or posting system. Save invoices to perform quality check with Coupa data as PDF invoice details. Update invoice details and TOS workflow tool. Generate journal batch file. Validate batch file and upload in DDS. Update status as posted in Coupa and TOS. In this automation, the bot creates a total of three reports. Once the bot is activated, it extracts two reports from the Coupa system. Invoice line item report which gives the details of each invoice loaded by the vendor. Invoice header report which gives consolidated details of all approved invoices. This extraction is done daily and the file is saved in a specified folder. The bot creates the first report on approved invoices based on these files. The bot then checks for invoices that have been loaded into Coupa but not updated in the workflow tool TOS. The missed invoice details are updated and the invoice copy saved in the workflow tool. The bot thus creates a second report on missed invoices. The bot creates a third report on invoices updated in the workflow tool TOS but not loaded in Coupa. These can be invoices sent directly to the payables mailbox, those where there is no PO or where PO requires amendments. The bot emails all three reports to the user doing quality check. On receiving the reports, the user verifies the approved invoices and activates a macro that creates a batch file. This batch journal batch file is uploaded into the DDS payment system and the status is updated in DDS and the workflow tool. The reports on missed invoices also enables the user to communicate with the vendor to follow the right process and upload all invoices to Coupa. This end-to-end -end invoice accounting automation has been delivered without changing the existing system landscape to deliver many efficiencies. It has reduced the cycle time for each invoice by two and a half minutes and given annualized savings of 150 hours. The automation has increased the accuracy by ensuring all invoices are updated within the system and no invoices are missed through increased control checks. As a result, the overall accounts payable invoice processing has been accelerated and enabled improved vendor management. <coughs> one process, I'll show you one more very quickly. Robotics process automation or RPA can be used to provide an interface between different systems. In this video, we will see how RPA has been used to integrate the Remedia tool with a local ERP system. Remedia is an intelligent cash application tool that is able to consolidate multiple inputs to extract bank receipts and open invoices based on remittance advice. It also matches invoices to payments and generates the payment allocation file. However, Rivalier was not integrated with local ERP in Netherlands and allocations had to be manually updated in the ERP. There was a huge cost involved in enabling the integration functionality within Rivalier. Therefore, RPA was implemented to enable the integration. The steps involved in the Rivalier cash application process are Receive output from Rivalier Convert output to readable Excel format Consolidate all converted files Segregate records as per receipt types. Update receipts into local ERP senses. Generate reconcile report. As a first step in this automation, all Remedia output CSV files are saved by the tool in a specified folder. Once the bot is run, it goes into this folder and then converts the file to a readable Excel format file. The bot consolidates the converted files and segregates the records as per the receipt types. The segregated receipt types include fully applied multiple receipts, partial overpay receipts, partial pay receipts, and suspense receipts. The bot then updates these receipts within the local ERP system synthesis. Once the receipts are updated, it also provides a reconciliations report for the user. The benefits of the automation are many. Firstly, it saves the cost of enabling the linear integration functionality. The automated load to the local ERP also resulted in higher accuracy in the process by eliminating manual updates. Where the manual process of uploading used to take 15 minutes for each Remedia CSV output file, the automated process takes only 5 minutes for each file. 
As the bot ensures the reconciliation report is readily available for the user, it has helped in enabling faster collections and improved working capital. This RPA solution can be scaled to enable integration across a wide landscape of tools. Talk to us for more on RPA. already touched upon what are the value drivers for RPA. Yeah. I think first and foremost, uh, the benefit is it's going to significantly increase the productivity and the um, efficiency because bots can actually work 24 by 7, 365 days, uh, as long as you have a volume of the processes which you can actually feed into, it can actually work. So it is going to significantly increase the productivity and definitely a greater accuracy, but bots can also do mistakes like human beings, but they don't ask any questions actually. So they do mistakes and then they keep quiet. Uh, uh, as long as your process is well defined and the rules are very clear, I think it exactly that's what you asked it to do. It's certainly going to reduce the cost because the the what what licenses we are talking is uh, significantly um, cheaper when we compare to the large organizations. What is the per headcount cost which we are spending? Compared to that, it is significantly cheaper, and because it's going to give you three times, like in 24 months, seven operation so it's going to work a lot more cost efficient and optimize your resources resources have to reskill upskill themselves to do lot more value added activities as i really mentioned earlier uh, there, there will be a loss of jobs there will be a readjustment which happens so what it means is that uh, we need to really upskill our our teams and the organization to really be stay relevant in the digital age. Uh, yeah. So, how do we actually upskill? Are there courses that we take? Are there uh, any uh, online courses or something available today that we can actually uh, sign up for? Or just to our, uh, yeah, there are there are few things. So, one is definitely what kind of resources you want to upskill is that your existing automation team to upskill actually to build an RPA solution or the people who are on the ground doing activities need to be upskilled. 
I think it is both uh, the online courses and the rigor that the automation team uh, the, in, in the organization has to go through. But I think the, the employees, it's very important they are part of the process. When this RPA or the technology revolution happening in the organization, you need to be part of the part of the whole process, embrace the change and understand what it means for them and organizations will surely arrange uh, the kind of skills and the training which are required. If you are not embracing the change and then if you think that what I know is good enough for me for the next decade, I think that is not going to be the case. So all I am saying is that the, you should be part of the whole change program in the organization. That's, that's fine for a bigger organization or like a huge company where there's a team and its whole process is going through. Yeah. So there are a lot of um, training courses and then the materials which are already available. Even as I mentioned, even the Institute Digital Assurance and the Accounting Board is coming up with a lot of online courses and training to upskill our uh, 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 chartered accountants as well as the students. So uh, I think we should make use of those uh, programs and training facilities. That will help us to be uh, you know aware and stay relevant and what it means for us uh, and then accordingly we can reskill and play a different role in the organization. Hope that answer. Yeah. Well, uh, I actually pursuing the course. I'm actually doing. I'm actually pursuing that. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. So we can play a big role in consulting and advisory services for the RP in the near future <laughs> because that's <laughs> going to be a why I started was, um, of course, we were functional people and we did not have any technical background. But I do believe that uh, if you look at it, it's not actually that difficult. Obviously, our technical knowledge is not very high. But I, but looking at these two, having used the tool, I can tell everyone that it's not actually as difficult as it means. Yeah. It is not entirely impossible for people with a non-technical background to actually uh, to actually upstream. So it's not it's not like uh, it's not actually rocket science. It's yeah. pretty far from. Absolutely, yeah, I think, see when I say upskilling, it doesn't mean that we need to know how to build an RPA or how to develop an RPA. So it's all that important thing is that how does the RPA works and then what is the process, RPA process. If you need to audit the whole RPA process, then you need to be aware of how it actually works out. I think it's all about uh, uh, what one wants to be like, say, see, uh, I want to be safe of for say one billion dollars company. I did not get into learning this. I'll be aware of the what are the problems in the market. When I started my career 20 years back, I thought of learning macros. Then uh, after a week's time, I realized that it's not my cup of uh, tea. Because it requires the full time, uh, the practice, then only you will be an expert in macros. So here the point is that I want to be an expert in developing the uh, RTS and uh, selling the market. Then I have to, as the uh, gentleman said, that one has to learn the course uh, beyond, one has to go beyond the uh, ICA uh, syllabus and then yeah. so on. Otherwise, if I want to be a CFO and wants to be uh, embrace of uh, the changes in the technology. And the one related question that uh, how do I, uh, how it works, the uh, whole thing. I have to go to, say, Prism and buy the EI path and buy the, uh, the board. And then connect to my technical guy who will uh, translate my requirement <coughs> into the uh, execution. Yeah. Uh, how it works. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you have to buy the tool and then they will come and then actually demo how exactly it works. They can do a one process automation for you that will give a fair idea uh, so that you can take it up to a next level. Even the CFOs of the organizations have to know, like, you know, to your organization where they are headed from a technology transformation perspective and in today's world CFOs have to be a technology led. So that means that it's not going deeper but we should be able to surface above uh, to make sure that we are making right decisions, we are making right investments and then we are bringing a right return on investments and, then, and, and our future finance model is sustainable, scalable and then it is structured and fit for purpose for the future. I think from that perspective we need to know like you know bigger picture of what's happening in the industry. I think 
it's it's all like you know what we want to really do and how far we want to go ahead. But all of us, including be be an auditor or be a technical developer or be a CFO, we need to upskill ourselves to what's happening in the industry as I go. So I think this will answer your point. Uh, uh, to uh, some extent. So there are two kinds of bots, attended bot and unattended bot. Attended bot means like it's a simple, uh, like you know, you have a small team and then you want to free up some of the, the efforts which are involved and then they want to do a lot more value added activities, you are going at it with an attended bot. That means you are actually freeing up yourself partially and then doing a lot more meaningful job. So this bot actually sits in your machine. You, like I given an example of like a you know, bank statement download. Whenever you feel like downloading, you trigger the bot and then that does for work for you. So you define the process and then you decide when you want to run the bot. And it's, it can either sit in your machine or you can have a dedicated machine where, uh, you know, where anybody can run the bot for a defined process. Unattended bot is something like works 24 bar 7. Um, and then where you have a large volume of uh, processor, sorry, for example, invoices and uh, all that needs to be managed, it requires something called a control room. So, you know, and where actually what will be scheduled and it can be triggered like right in the midnight, at any time. So, this is suitable when you are building an enterprise-wide strategy for a large-scale enterprise and you are looking at the process to or transform and automate end to end. I think that case the unattended bots are not more relevant and then organization looking at the size and scale and then the scope for automation they need to really decide that what what should be the best fit case whether it is an unattended or an attended bot. I think that answered some of your questions on like you know, how actually the bot works whether it is in the machine or but all that you need is a license um, you know, to operate. And again, it's very much linked to what I mentioned is like large organizations go through the big transformations, like your know, transformation program runs for like you know three, five years, right? And then you can't wait for the whole transformation to happen. That's where you have to come up with something called an agile methodology which is quicker ROI and then which is much faster to deploy and looking at some part of your processes automate and then make your process lot more efficient and then you shift to a, a something a big bang approach called a digital com, digital uh, you know the command center RP that is more of your unattended bots and multiple bots running multiple processes and all that. So there are different approaches so we don't have to go with a big bang approach but we can start with small but scale fast to make it actually work for the organizations. So it depends upon like you know what are we trying to implement like for a simple process it can be as quick as two to three weeks or just two weeks but if you are looking at end to end processes multiple geographies large scale implementations may take like six months so uh, and then there you are you are targeting like you know more than 100 100 uh, activities of savings and the making of lot more efficient processes and then there is a large appetite for a much bigger organization to go with that kind of a model and approach. So, so it depends upon uh, what kind of size and scale of the process which we are trying to automate. If it is something very quick, very small, one entity, one process, I think it is super fast. This command center RP is gone or something. It is This command center is a dinosaur thing. The era of centralized processing is over. Now it is decentralized. Full thing is decentralized all over the world. So the best approach would be the first approach. It says agile RP. So for each geography you have to deploy separately. So it's not going to be the same solution for itself. So uh, what I'll give you one of the examples. Like right now we are rolling out a 
ERP across our markets and uh, regions, there are certain processes are, we are trying to make it similar across like be the UK and be Singapore or be Germany, certain processes, be our media device processing. That you are going to build a command center RPA where I will have a robot sitting centrally managed through a center of excellence and then it runs across different geographies and to run it. Where in a small organization and where there are multiple geographies are there, processes are very different. Like you know, each market have their own AP process. Then it becomes a lot more challenging to centralize because you need to build your automations to suit that particular market or that particular process. So I think it all boils down to how standardized, how structured, how organized our processes are. That makes it a lot more efficient. Uh, to add to her point, yeah. uh, when it comes to size of the organization of the pilot project, whatever you said, uh, for a CFO, practicing CFO, which is very small, just started two or three years, uh, how can we adopt uh, RPA? Yeah, I think it's a very good question. I have passed that question when it comes to an audit. I think we have a small session on that. So we will cover that, but it's a very valid question which we need to think through. So time to time you look at it that what model best fits. So how do we build a strategic roadmap? I'm not going to spend too much time into it, but you need a very strong leadership commitment in the organization to build an RPA roadmap. In order to build a strong commitment, you need to have a very valid business case, like you know, what it looks like and then how do you actually um, build your model which gives a return on investment, so which is definitely the case. And then you assess the opportunities, look at your processes, make an assessment, pick high level assessment and then present your business case and then look at your model, like you know, when I'm talking about the operating model, it can be a people, process, technology, what should be your project team and what should be the process owners and who are going to build the solutions. All that has to be kept in mind and consideration how different stakeholders including IT, finance, HR, involve what point in time. So it all depends upon what kind of scale of automation we are looking at. Then you look at and make an assessment, call like your different RPA vendors and then assess what best fits for our organization and then build a roadmap. From, from my perspective, look at all, address all the four W's and then one H, like you know, what, who, why, when and then how are we going to do it, like you know, make a list of all your questions and then build a time on value and then start with small, like you know, do a small uh, process and ask them, ask any of these vendors to do, they do it for free so that you can do a testing and then you can make an informed decision. So start with small and then fail quickly and then learn very quickly um, and that helps to scale rapidly. So it, it, it helps us to build a very strong awareness in ourselves. Make sense? So that in a large organization it helps us to create a center of excellence. So when I say center of excellence, you can have an RPA engineers sitting centrally, they are running all the processes, managing it, making sure like when I'm talking about the RPA, you will have a control room where you can look at the lash, dashboard like how many bots are running, how many bots are paid that kind of a model which will help us to create a true center of excellence. A lot of organizations are looking at creating this capability in-house to actually build, make the process a lot more efficient and scalable. So what this is to, this is not as complex as it looks. But what it draws is like, you know, as the complexity of the decision making goes up, the appetite for automation reduces. Same with like, from uh, structured standardized data to more of an unstructured data, then it reduces. Say for example, some of the cases, uh, payment application, invoice processing, 
processes are very repetitive and then more than 50% of those end-to-end processes can be automated. So which is very structured and then uh, decision making is very limited. But when it comes to judgment, client profitability analysis or you can have a budgeting and forecasting exercise or you have to, uh, you know, any, any sort of credit management. So where there are analytics are very high in nature, judgments are very high, then there is a less scope for automation. Even there you have a scope for automation, but the, the percentage reduces. It's a simple approach, like you, know, you define your uh, discover and define, like look at all the processes, look at end-to-end -end process and define that and then you design the solution to which you can actually use your vendors and all that and then once the process is designed then you can actually deploy and remap and train your people how that process, whole process is going to work but it's very key that you have, you need to have a process expertise uh, and then either in-house technical expertise or, um, or outside expertise as you mentioned that you don't need that kind of a technical expertise. I, I had a, like more than 10 member automation experts who are working on a number of platforms. I have now reskilled them very quickly into an RPA solution. So that way it is, it is it's very quick and then very There's a shortage of people in this field as well. Yeah, yeah. Even for hardcore people there is a shortage Yeah, very true. So uh, in Densu, actually in, um, in in our Japan office, like in we have as well now we have deployed more than thousand bots for the front end business process. You asked like whether it is applicable for finance processes. They have done it in like six to nine months time. More than thousand bots are deployed to do their media planning, media buying, and then end to end processes. That was not for the purpose of cost uh, saving there was a heavy pressure on the employees like they working like 12 14 hours in japan so which we wanted to free up their time and then make it process lot more efficient and then we have gone through with the robotic process automations and and, and similarly smbc bank is one of the leading japan based bank they have done a massive automations like you know, 300 million 3 3 million hours are expected to be by end of 2020, equivalent to 1,500 employees. So these are some of the big automations which has happened in the industry. I think if, if I look at the current state and then what's going to be the uh, next one year down the line, I think you will have a lot more to this list. So this is what is all happening in the industry. So RPA is in audit, I think it's. So quick question, is RPA is a threat or an opportunity? What do you think? Opportunity. Opportunity. It's a mix. Both. Yes. It's both, yeah. What do you look at it like? Is it? Practical is a threat. My enterprise will just wait to say 10 lakhs. Currently, my turnover is 1000 crores. 10 people are working in finance. Obviously, it looks like what is the return of investment. Let us go there back to you. Okay. From audit perspective, is it an opportunity or a threat? So, it's all how you actually look at your problem, right? So, if you, if you think, yes, like there are many are certified into a future future kind of a trend which are happening. I think Sathyabhar and Sir has actually certified themselves to be a certified insurer or more. For as economy. So what I am trying to say is that how do you actually look at like you know, if RPA is definitely going to happen and the industry is going to grow more than 40 percent year on year basis. Can you make it as an opportunity? Can you convert that threat into an opportunity? I think it's our call. It. There can be an advisory is required to manage the audit, right? So it's not just about we ourselves learning and doing the audit of RPA process, but we can have an advisory, like a lot of big force, 
are making huge investments in RPF and they are the major advisories for various organizations uh, today. So it's all like the way we look at it can be a threat for sure if we not upskill or reskill or if we don't ignore it, it can be a threat. How to audit robotic process automation? There are some guidelines given by the Digital Assurance and Accounting Boards of ICAI have published uh, uh, published uh, actually the uh, uh, article on this. So uh, probably we can go through some of those very quickly. And then how audit practices are evolving to incorporate technology. I think all the big force actually making the RPA and then the technologies as part of their audit toolkits. So that's very big shift. And then before actually talking about this slide, I would like to answer your question. Like I would segregate like mid-sized audit firms and then the very large size the audit firms or finance service providers. So when it comes to a mid-sized audit firms, A, they um, the mid-sized mid -sized audit firms actually support and service the mid-sized corporates, if I look at it. So their adoption will be slightly slower, but they need to be definitely prepared to know like, you know, what are, how do we actually um, audit uh, RPA processes, they definitely need to know it. There may not be as much as relevance for the big organization, like big organizations to adopt RPA as their toolkit because their team size is very uh, small and then the, the cost is not that high. Like using an RPA as their toolkit, I think you have a number of softwares which you are already using. So moving into a lot more digital uh, journey, which are there anyway, I think awareness and then um, knowing that how that actually works will help. But for the big size, big size um, audit firms, they definitely can uh, can actually use the RPA as their audit, uh, audit toolkits and a lot of big size firms like some Deloitte and also making a huge investments in the artificial intelligence technologies. Say for example like big companies have presence in more than 100 countries and then how do you actually manage and review the revenue recognition policies and then if you have thousands of contracts, how do you actually do it? Can you go through each of them? All like you go by the material, at least hundreds of contracts will be there, and you have a timeline to achieve it. It's not going to be a joke. So, what you are going to do is that you have a whole artificial intelligence technology, you feed all the contracts, and then it gives you a nice dashboard which says that these are the contracts are recommended when and then what are the terms and all that. And you filter and then only look at the, all the material ones. So the technology make you a lot more efficient because that is required in a such an auditing such a big organizations. And then if it's very important from our professional perspective to afford that uh, kind of an audit quality, it is quite key. So hope that answered your question to some extent. Based on the client you know. Yeah. So auditing, I think, uh, understand the governance, how actually you do an audit of an RPA process. So understand the governance process of the uh, RPA of the organization, whether it can be a data security policy, so the models are set up, how the controls are managed, all that. We need to look at it. System chain management controls. How does the chain management actually happen? Who actually approves testing and then um, you know, sign off the whole processes. We need to look at, analyze robotic controller. When I am talking about a big organizations, we will have a bot controller. It's something called an orchestrator which manages, schedules multiple bots and all that. So how does that whole thing work? And then look at the audit rail as uh, mentioned. And then RPA also interact with the multiple uh, systems integration with the multiple systems. So we need to know like you know what are the different systems involved in in, um, in the audit uh, the RPA touches upon and then what it means from a uh, implication from a finance perspective. <coughs> I think 
the couple of them are self-explanatory reviewing the RPA transaction law and the most important thing is that we should do some of the sample testing like you know what should be the input and output like you know, if you take some samples and then you have a desired output is that work in the same fashion I think that gives us a assurance and confidence yes this this actually works so I think this is an early stage glad that the um, this is taken from the um, Digital Assurance and Accounting Board guidelines. So glad that the institute has quickly come up with some sort of guidance to audit the RPA processor. So in the coming days, I think this becomes a lot more relevant. So as I already mentioned, Deloitte had made a huge investment, hundreds of millions of investments into AI and data analytic platforms. Um, it helps them to give a strong assurance to big corporate audits. Um, I think that's some of the, and even other big posts are making huge investments in directions. And they are actually ahead of the curve in the, the whole industry. And then some of the advisors for building an RPA strategy and vision, they are the advisory factor. So we can really look at the mid size you know, practicing consider this is one of the key areas of opportunities to advise or build a model for a mid-sized uh, or even a, you know the Indian corporate type of an enterprise to manage their processes to make it lot more efficient. Same point which I mentioned about the contract management which Deloitte is managing the same uh, the process, the entire contract, they feed into the AI and then that throws a lot of insights and analysis. The internal audit, the audit samplings, all that can be managed through this. Otherwise, it's highly impossible uh, to do a big audit in a very tight deadlines. I think it becomes only the true and fair view. It may not be, you know, uh, it becomes a really challenging for the auditors to actually. Uh, sign the balance sheet and the PNL. So this, the the AI and the technology plays a significant role in in the whole uh, world of audit for especially the big enterprise audit. Especially the organizations who are much ahead of the curve in terms of the technologies, you will never know like you know what is the data input and the output process and how how the recognitions and then the both revenue and the cost recognition happens. So it's very important that they, they adopt it very quickly and then use it. Yeah. There will be a lot of what driven frauds will take this. Sorry? What driven frauds will take this? And the criminals who will deploy those technologies will be one step or two steps ahead of the auditors. The auditors will not even know what hit them in the first place. So the criminals of the future will be so intelligent that we as startup contacts cannot keep busy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's where we need to be also try to be smarter so that we how actually we can try to keep up that pace. So beyond the point we can't because there are things which is, which happens we keep hearing in the day to day in the space of uh, so they, they are much smarter. So they go under the carpet, so you can't prevent some extent. But I think the, the strong awareness and making it as a part of the audit toolkits will help you to really to assure to a great extent. Uh, I take a few examples. Example, North Korea. Yeah. One year back, they used bots to attack Sony pictures. The data, they took up the data. There is nothing to stop a firm to capture your financial data Extracting. You will not even know that the data has been extracted in the first place. Yeah. So the bots will be used for probing, that is security probing and all. They don't need to use people. You <coughs> will not be aware of what hit you in the first place. See, they are not hit you tell us we used to probe the weakness of the system and such. Yeah, very true. We just send a, like a probe to see where the weakness is. And the weakness will just hit you with the algorithm. And using that algorithm, you will use that to access your bank password. Your, uh, all your hotel details and next day an automatic instruction will go to the bank, next day you will find that it's like some of money has been written it's already happening. Yeah, there are many such cases which are happening. So, 
I think in a, in a nutshell, uh, what I am trying to say is that embrace the technology wholeheartedly and then I know it is significant threat as well as an opportunity. Look at the positive side of it and then um, and then try to upskill and reskill ourselves to uh, be uh, stay at relevant at the digital age. And then and the end, look at the opportunities what you have and then how do you actually make the possible or the impossible the possible. So I think that's it. So I have a small video which shows the mind blowing technology. Forget about robotics and all that. So it gives you like what's all happening in the industry in terms of the technology. So thank you very much for a patient listening. I, I hope that Although it's a very different topic, I hope that made some sense and some insights to you all. So thank you for very much for the patient listening and then I have a video to very quickly show in a minute. Japanese 
and finally applied neural text-to-speech technology so it sounded exactly like me just speaking Japanese. And the most amazing part? All of these technologies exist today. The future is here. Thank you very much. It was a fine session we had here for robotic automation as well as the mind blowing the technology, which is the need of the art for all the members here for the series. And it's a time now to conclude the program. I request B. Chandrasekhar sir to please come forward on behalf of Bangalore branch to present a memento to our uh, speaker for the day. Janardhan Kappa, we will give a big applause for him, please. Very kind of you. Thank you, one and all.